The only thing I can say about today's recipe video is it's bomb and you're welcome because today we make a peach cobbler. Let's go. Whipping up all of your favorite recipes. Simply food. You should know by now that you're in for a treat. Simply food. There's no other channel where you'd rather be. Simply food. Seafood pasta cakes and pies. Sing and laugh and even cry. Like and share and hit subscribe. Simply food by T.Y. All right, y'all, let's jump right into it. So we're going to be working with four 15-ounce cans of peaches today. Now, just so you guys know, I like to use the ones that are in 100% juice, not that stuff that's in that fake syrup. We're going to use one stick of unsalted butter. We have one cup of all-purpose flour. And in this little bowl, I have two teaspoons of baking powder and one-fourth of a teaspoon of coarse kosher salt. And I have one cup of sugar. In a separate bowl, I have a half a cup of granulated sugar and a half a cup of light brown sugar. We're going to be using some cinnamon. I like to use the Vietnamese cinnamon. Some ground nutmeg. My favorite, the Nielsen Macy Pure Vanilla Extract. And then my secret little trick is I like to go in with a little bit of the Watkins caramel flavor. Now pay close attention. So we have four cans of the peaches total. Three of those cans drain completely set aside. That'll equal out to about four cups. On the fourth can, you're going to keep the juice from that one can. As you can see, place it inside of the pot. You're going to set the pot to the side. Now, one thing I like to do with my peach cobbler is I like to add in different textures as far as the peaches. So the three cans, you're going to leave those slices just as they are. The fourth can, I like to chop them up nice and small. Doesn't need to be complete mush, but you definitely want them to be nice and tiny, okay? So now let's work on getting our peaches together. So like I said, we have the juice from the one can. We're gonna add in our three cans of the peaches that were drained. And now we're gonna add in the fourth can of peaches that were chopped up. We're now also gonna go in with adding in that salt as well as the brown sugar and the, um, the granulated sugar. And like I said, for that salt, that was uh, one fourth of a teaspoon of coarse kosher salt. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna bring this up to a simmer. Once this comes up to a simmer, make sure you guys that it's not boiling. A simmer, a light <laughs> simmer. You do not want to burn your sugar. Once this comes up to a simmer, you're gonna add in one eighth of a teaspoon of cinnamon, one eighth of a teaspoon of your nutmeg. You're gonna add in one tablespoon of the vanilla extract and a half a tablespoon of the caramel flavor. Once you do that, you're gonna give that a good mix. You can allow that to stay on the simmer for an additional 10 minutes. After the 10 minutes, turn it off and set it to the side, remove it from the heat. Please make sure that it's not boiling. You do not want to burn the sugar, nor do you want to have a bitter taste from burning your vanilla. So just all together, about 15 minutes simmering, turn off the heat, set it to the side. Now let's work on the batter. You wanna have your oven preheated at 350 degrees. Once it gets to 350, put your one stick of butter inside of your ceramic dish. If I can find the measurement for that pan, I'll put it on the screen. Allow that to melt. In a separate bowl, we're gonna add in our one cup of our all-purpose flour, our one cup of our sugar, our two teaspoons of our baking powder, and our one fourth of a teaspoon of our salt. We're gonna give that a good mix around just to make sure that the salt and all of that has been fully incorporated. And now that that is fully incorporated, we're gonna go in with one cup of whole milk. One cup of whole milk. I don't know nothing about no substitution, so don't waste your time asking me, chat. One cup of whole milk, okay? Give that a good mix. Now, this is the key. Once you can see that everything is fully incorporated, stop mixing. Do not overwork this batter. You do not want to start overworking the gluten. We're not trying to make bread here. You want a nice, light, and fluffy cake. So as soon as that batter is fully mixed and it looks like the consistency of like pancake batter, you've done good. Take the whisk out of the bowl and set it to the side. 
at this stage, everything should be pretty much done. You have your batter done. You have your peaches done that have been cooking, that have been sitting to the side. You have your butter in your baking dish that should now at this point be melted. So now we can take that hot pan out of the oven. Be very careful so you do not burn yourself. Now what you're going to do is you're going to pour your batter into this hot buttered dish. Now pay close attention here. You're not going to see me trying to really mix in the butter with the batter more uh, necessarily. All I'm trying to do here is just make sure that I have the batter in an even layer. That's it. I'm not really going in and trying to make sure that the butter is all incorporated. It's going to naturally do that on its own, okay? So like I said, now that I have all the batter in there, I'm just gently going in, just making sure that I have the batter spread out all the way through to the edges. And then once I do that, now it's time for us to start adding in our peaches with a slotted spoon, slotted spoon. You wanna go ahead and start adding in your peaches. Remember, do not mix in the peaches. Just gently lay them on top of that batter and just keep it pushing. Don't go mixing nothing around. Just lay it all on the top. But please make sure that you are using a slotted spoon at this stage. You want to make sure that you're staying in control of how much liquid is inside of your dish. You do not want this to be soupy. You do not want it to be runny. You want to make sure that you can get those beautiful crispy edges. And the only way you can do that is if you stay in control of how much liquid's going to be in it. Now that we have all of our peaches in, pay close attention to how much of the juice I'm going to be putting in. It really is not going to be that much, you guys. A little bit does go a long way. I think I maybe only use about maybe four ladlefuls, okay? So just keep that in mind. I know you're going to be tempted. Don't do it. Also, you're going to end up with about a cup to about a cup and a half of extra peaches and lots of juice left over. That's on purpose. You're going to set that to the side because we're going to use that as a topper. So do not feel pressured to put in all of the peaches and all of the juice. Just put in just enough, okay? Top it off with some cinnamon. Place it in your oven at 350 degrees for about 40 to 45 minutes or until it is golden brown. At that stage, you're then going to take it out of the oven. Make sure you're being very gentle because of course it's going to be piping hot. Also, little trick, if you can, use a ceramic dish. I know it might seem petty, but I promise you, making it a ceramic dish will really get you those crispy edges. And as you can see, it looks absolutely delicious. You want to allow this to rest for about maybe about five or 10 minutes or so before you go soup, uh, you know, scooping it up and serving it. But let me tell you something. Y'all, this peach cobbler was on some other level type of stuff. I'm telling you right now, this peach cobbler is the only one you're ever going to need, okay? After it's had some time to rest, go on ahead and serve it up. Eat it by itself. Eat it with ice cream. You do whatever you got to do. But all I know is, is that this right here is a recipe that you need to follow from now on. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. Please hit subscribe. Hit that bell to be notified. Make sure that it's set to all so that you guys are getting notified when I'm posting all of my videos. And as always, y'all babies stay cute and take care. Y'all, my mouth is literally salivating. <laughs> Tag me in videos and pictures if you make this, okay? Because it's going to be everything. Bye, y'all. Slaying in the kitchen. Simply Food by T.Y. We hope that you enjoyed it. Simply Food by T.Y. If you haven't took the time, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Simply Food.